Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the halfling fighter. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the human barbarian. I'm Ashley, and I play Aklep the Druid, a former member of the Burning Mammoth. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, Aklep, Corgo, and Zancath talked to Vare, a former crusader who said she lives nearby and not in the caverns, which she called Calamity Caves. She was somewhat evasive, but said that they were welcome to stay in her hideaway in the cliffside for the night. They ventured further into the cave instead and found a passage leading to where a group of humans were camped, but the passage was trapped. Realizing that these were humans who had made offerings to the White Dragon back in episode 40, the scouts had a lengthy conversation with one of them named Groton. They eventually learned that the people of this land are called Sarkorians, and the specific tribe are the Sutaki. I think I mentioned that, right? Maybe I didn't. Well, I don't they, think I, so. I think I've definitely mentioned the Sarkorians, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, people of this land are called the Sarkorians, and they are ruled by the White Dragon, and they really dislike someone who sounds an awful lot like a necromancer. The Sutaki were waiting for Aokoe and Tidanu, who left with Dini the Infant, and an honor guard for some place deeper in the caves. Gratton asked the party to keep an eye out for them, as they should have been back by now, and the heroes agreed. There was nothing to do now but continue deeper into the caves of the west, where they found a room filled with cursed trees, and one of these trees was trying to strangle a man with its branches. Thanks to a critical nature check by Aklep, they realized that these abyss-warped trees could be disabled by a prayer to cast out the fiendish energy. Aklep did exactly that, freeing the man from the tree. He ran from the room and joined the scouts. In an attempt to purify the cursed grove, Aklep cast wildfire into the room, prompting two of the trees to pick up their roots and charge at the party. Aklep is currently sustaining the spell, and each round that he concentrates on it, the radius of the spell will grow by five feet. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. It's pretty neat. Yes. It's a pretty awesome spell. <laughs> In this circumstance, the spell's pretty clutch. We left Aklep with his shield raised as one of the trees lifted its stone longsword up, bringing it down toward Aklep. And they do have reach, by the way. Sure. Here comes the attack roll. Rolls a 28 to hit. Yikes. Um, yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay. Let's see what the damage is. Is that a critical hit? I don't know. So, what's your armor class? My armor class is 21, oh, but good. then when my shield is raised, it's it has my shield has two, so... Yes, so it should be 23 with your shield raised. So that's definitely not a critical hit. It has to exceed your AC by 10 or more to be a critical hit. Okay. So it's just regular damage. 13 points of damage. Of that, some of that, 11, 11 points of that is bludgeoning damage... And two points of that is spirit damage. And then with its last action, the creature raises its shield. <gasps> I'm sure that we've seen spirit damage before, but the little ghost that appears in Foundry when it's spirit damage is adorable. Oh, that's the creature's turn. And that means that next it is Corgo's turn. Corgo, the situation <sighs> is this. There are these two crazy, scary looking trees in front of you, and one of them is about five feet from Aklep and has just smashed this giant stone sword into him. What do you want to do? Wait is, wait a second. Aklep, you had your shield raised. Uh-huh. You could take a reaction to use a shield... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, you can make the shield take some of you the damage. You could use a shield block and have your shield take some of that damage. Oh. Would you like to do that? Does it break my shield? It could if there's too much damage. Let's look at what your shield says. I always forget. My shield max HP is 20. Okay. So let's look up your shield here. Uh, where is Eyed it? Hide shield. Hide shield. Where? There it is. Hardness of four. So wh the way that works is you reduce damage from any hit by four points of damage. The rest of the damage is split between you and the shield, right? So Ooh. you took how much damage again? You took 13. Uh, 13. So it would take... 
uh, four points off of that, making it nine. And then you would split the remaining nine between you and the shield. So you and the shield would each take four points. That seems nice. Yeah. Does Aklop have the shield block feet? Oh, well, that I don't know. Do you have to have the shield block feet? You have to have the shield block feet. Okay. Let's Do I? see. Because this I game have... is all about having permission from your stupid feet that you have. He does. He does have the shield block feet. Cool. Yeah, I have a reaction that's about. There you go. You're good. Shield block. Okay. That's awesome. So you got to keep track of all that then. Instead of you taking 13 points of damage, you take four, your shield takes four, and four points just get dissipated, uh, absorbed by the hardness of the shield. That's cool. I think that's how you do it. Yeah. I think so, too. Does the does Foundry track shield hit points for you? It does. That's awesome. Way to go, Foundry. I did it. I, all I right. put all the things in there. Well done. You're going to be a Pathfinder pro in no time. Yeah, I'm killing it. I think she's a yeah. pro already. Uh, can you make Corgo go rage for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Corgo, it is your turn. You've just seen Aklep block this attack. Yeah, Aklep's awesome. He is. All right, that triggered an attack of opportunity. Good. Okay, Ooh. so Hrungar ran up, and then now we know the tree can do things. So the tree, as Hrungar runs by, right through his threatened area, swings its mighty sword at poor little Hrungara. Poor Hrungara. Uh, I believe when you make an opportunity attack, it's your full attack bonus, right? No map? Yeah, I yeah, think I so. Think so. All right. That is a natural one. Yay. So Grungari yeah. easily ducks under this awkward, clumsy tree's weapon and is now next to the tree. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to bite it. Is this ma- tree made of stone or is it just all wood? Uh, it looks like it's made of wood, but its weapons are made of stone. Okay, Grungari rolled a uh, nine, so a total of 19, which is not going to hit because I know it's 20-something. That's correct. Grungari's going to step up and try to stop Dab it with the long spear. Also rolled a 19, so that's also a miss. Yeah, I'm afraid that that does not a hit. You've got some decent bonuses to hit here, but you're just not quite rolling high enough. you got to roll over a 10. That's the general rule. Yep. All right, so that's all three actions. Okay. And that brings us to the hunter, the fellow that you rescued. He pulls out a bow. Apparently, he dropped a, a oh. spear in the room, but he says, thank you, thank you, friends. Uh, I'll help. And he pulls out a bow. I did not expect that. Would have would have understood if the guy who had just been nearly killed chose to sit this one out, but I respect it. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah. He takes one action to pull out his bow, second action to shoot. <laughs> uh, Ooh, that's a nice. natural 20. Yep. Maybe we have another friend on our hands. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, so he hits with the bow. The bow is deadly, of course. So I got to roll critical damage. Wow. Nice. Okay. That's a good roll. I'm glad we saved this guy. Yeah. So 23 points of damage to the tree. And let's see. Does the tree have resistance? Yeah, the tree doesn't seem fully harmed by all of that. However, that was such a high roll that uh, it still hurt the tree. Uh, That's still a decent amount of damage to that poor, beautiful tree. And then he's going to take another shot, because why not? All right, poor, yeah. beautiful, demon-tristed tree. Oh, well, you're just <laughs> you're just prejudiced. <laughs> to it attacking us? Yes. Uh, the second shot's only an 11. That's probably not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Rangara is now in the room, and now it is the uh, turn of the hazard that is in this room. So here's what happens. The trees that are in the room, not just the ones that are the weird ones that are attacking you, but the cursed-looking trees in the room start swinging their branches around, turning the entire room into hazardous or difficult terrain, all right? So the room is more difficult to move through. That's their first of four actions. The remainder of their four actions are spent trying to hit anyone in the room who's not supposed to be there, which means they're about to take three attacks on Hrungara. Uh-oh. Yeah, so cool. here comes the first one. They're all on fire. Uh, not all of them. Uh, the fire is that area you can see to the south, that uh, ten foot diam- uh, ten foot radius circle they to the south. They will all be on fire. Oh, they will be all on fire, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. First attack on Hrungara. A 30. Oh. Does a 30 hit? Yeah, that's a critical. Yikes. That's not cool, man. Is it a critical hit? It is a critical hit. Mike, I need you to tone down your 30s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm almost in my 50s, man. 
too late Wait. to tone down my 30s. Oh, gosh. We like our animal companions. All right, 26 points of damage to poor Hrungara. This is so uncool. Hrungara, use your shield. <laughs> Hrungara yelps. That's a lot uh-huh. of damage for one hit. And then second attack. What was it? Crit. Second attack. It's the first of three. A 17 to hit. It's a miss. And third Ooh. attack. That is a hit. A 20. A non-natural 20. All right. So the trees begin slamming down on poor Hrungara. Okay, Hrungara nope. is down. Hrungara oh. is unconscious and dying. And I will move Hrungara to just before... Where should I move Hrungara in the initiative? To just before the trees that just knocked him down, I guess? I mean, that would be where he already is, right? Just before the... Chief? Yeah, whatever I the forgot. hazard okay. is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now it is Zankath's turn. Zankath, you've just seen uh, this hunter that you rescued deliver a mighty blow to this tree, but then the trees in the room have smashed Rungara into the ground. What do you want to do? Well, Zankath was just about to step forward and go past uh, Aklep into the room and sees uh, Rungara get beaten quite severely and opts not to do that. Okay. I'm going to use one action. I think it's one action. Correct me if I'm wrong. To mm-hmm. pull out a tallow bomb. Okay. That's one action, right? Uh, yes, it is. I'm then going to throw the tallow bomb. Mm-hmm. Uh, like there. Got it. Because yep. it's got splash. It does. So it should hit them both. It doesn't yeah. do a ton of damage, but, you know, I'll take it. Uh, let's see how this goes. It's a 19. That's not going to hit. Not with the shield raised. It doesn't hit. Mm. Um, but let's see. Does it do any splash damage on a miss? I don't know. Well, let's see I here. bet it does. Probably. That seems logical. I just... All right. Tell a bomb lesser? Yes. Most bombs of the splash trait, when you use a thrown weapon with the splash trait, you don't add your strength modifier to the damage roll, and if an attack with the splash weapon fails... Succeeds or critically succeeds, all creatures within five feet of the target, including the target, take the listed splash damage. So you failed, yeah. but you didn't critically fail, no. which means the creature takes the listed splash damage, okay. which is fire damage. Yeah, it's one d four of fire damage. Oh, that's not that's the regular damage. The splash damage is just I think one point of damage. That sounds right. However, as you realize, when these creatures suddenly burst into flames. They are vulnerable to fire, so they actually take more than that. Just two? Do they take two damage? No, it's it's a bit more than just two. <laughs> well, that makes me feel a little bit better about this decision. Uh, yeah, in fact, they both take, yeah, more than two. Cool. And they look pretty unhappy with your decision. I, I, you know, I respect that. What else you want to do? I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out another. Tallow bomb in preparation for uh, next round. Yeah. Okay. I can't really argue with that. That's a smart choice. Yep. All right. I'm done. The second of the two creatures, uh, the less wounded one. Uh, first of all, it ended its last turn in the fire that Aklep summoned. So you're going to have to remind me it should be taking persistent damage. Yeah. So remind me at the end of its turn, it has to take persistent damage, and it has to make a flat check to see if it can end the fire effect. All right, so let's see. It gets to move. Uh, What is its move? Its move is 25 feet. It gets to move 25 feet, which it does, moving to here, which puts it right next to its friend and allows it to attack poor Corgo. But it takes fire damage moving through the fire. It does. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, it yeah. doesn't, have much, doesn't have much other choice. It has to It has to move that way. So why don't you tell me about that fire damage? Yeah, so this is uh, hazardous terrain, and a creature that moves on the ground through the area takes one fire damage for every square of that area it moves into. Nice. And if it ends its turn in the area, it must re- succeed a reflex save or take one persistent fire damage. Okay. It won't in this case, but it did last time. Yeah, yeah. 
Did I heighten the spell last time? I don't know what that means. It says heightened plus two. No, I don't think you heightened I don't it. think so. Okay. Now, is that for every... Let's see. Every square. One damage for... It takes one fire damage for every square that it moves into. So that's... It moved into... Let's see. Oh, how does that... It covers multiple how squares. How does that work with it being... Big? Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know how that... Okay. <laughs> let's look it up. <laughs> I would think that both squares count. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, I mean he's big, so he's walking into yeah. multiple fire. Plus, it helps us. Not that too. I mean, I like it for that reason, but also just plus, logically, it makes sense. Plus, it helps us. <laughs> Let's be real. Hey, I think I could go pick back up. Uh, maybe not yet. Throwing tallow bombs lessens my weight and means that I could pick up whatever it was that I left at the camp. I don't think you're going to find the rules. I think you just have to... I, yeah, I'm trying to find anyone who's discussed it. I'm just going with large creature moving through hazardous terrain. I mean, if that's... If rules. that's the, if we're going to make that ruling, then I'm not going to move him through. He's not going to wade through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight. Uh, he's not going to move through eight points of damage plus the extra damage from fire. I would say it's right? only five. He doesn't know that it does that until he starts moving into it. I, I think he recognizes fire. All right. I would say it's only right. five squares. So <laughs> five he was squares. here, right? Right. So then, like, he was already in that one. So I don't right. think that counts. One, two, three, so four, then, five. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Because the corners don't count. I would say it's only okay. five, but, like, right. if he that's doesn't fine. move through it, that's still understandable. Fire bad. We'll go with that. That's fine. Five. All right. So we'll do, we'll do that. We'll do five points of damage plus whatever extra damage from being weak to fire vulnerable to fire okay gm's note i've tried to look up an official ruling on hazardous terrain for creatures larger than medium size but it looks like there has not yet been an official ruling some players suggest only new hazardous squares that a creature moves into should inflict damage and others say that every square a large creature moves through should inflict damage and both arguments are reasonable I guess this is just evidence that no matter how many rules the designer tries to impose to cover every possible situation, something will always be missed. And now the weird tree is within range of Corgo with its huge sword. So here we go with a melee attack. This is a 27 to hit Corgo. That will hit. Stop it, Mike. Stop it. We've talked about this before. I can't. I think it's I just the way that the math of the game works. So that's 18 points of damage to Corgo as the creature slams its enormous sword down onto your shoulders. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm not going to shield block this time. I think Corgo's pretty easy to hit. I'm going to try hitting him again. That's fair. No. <laughs> oh, but I only rolled a 17. That's a miss. And that's the end of my turn. Yay. Aklep, <laughs> you want to sustain your spell? Mm-hmm. I absolutely yeah. want to spend, I believe, one action yes. to sustain my spell. Make it bigger. So that means that this thing, this circle that we've got here. Oh, hey, that guy who was supposed to take one persistent fire damage at the end of his round after, or oh, right. like make a reflex save rather to try, take, put himself out of fire. There we go. My apologies. I'm a little late. Yep. So you're right. We need to do the persistent fire damage. I think he- does he have to spend an action to do that? To do what? Yeah. It doesn't say that. It doesn't I don't say think it, it says that. Well, there's a reflex save the first round. Uh, what, what are you asking about the action for? Asking if it's an action to try to put it out or if it's oh. just a, a, vin- that, a thing that happens. He gets a free attempt at the end of his round to avoid the persistent damage. It's a DC 15 flat check. Okay. So hold on. I got to mark this damage here. It's a DC 15 flat check. Um, and then during his round, he could take an action to get another attempt to put out the persistent fire damage, but only once per round. All right, the flat check is a 13, which means that he is not able, the creature is not able to put out the persistent fire damage, which means it continues. I'll say that it says it's a DC 20 reflex, not 15. That's a reflex save. I'm talking about the flat check. Oh, I don't know what these things yeah, are. Yeah, a flat check is is what used to, used to you roll a percentile check to do this in previous editions. So whenever you're suffering persistent damage, every round at the end of your round, you get to roll a, just a d20 with no modifiers 
And if you roll a 15 or higher, then the persistent damage ends, whether it's fire or acid or whatever. So that's something you get to do at the end of your round if you're suffering from persistent damage. Other flat checks that are used in this game are for things like concealment, if you're trying to hit someone who you can't entirely see, that sort of thing. All right. It's still suffering fire damage. It failed the flat check. What a sucker. <laughs> uh, Act like, what else do you want to do? So you've sustained the spell. What else do you want to do? Oh, this is this is when the decisions get hard, right? Sustaining a spell, easy. Yeah. Other, other stuff, not as easy. Now, one option that you could take is you could take a five-foot step, a, a step action, and that would move you out of the range of the weird tree that is closest to you. You can move diagonally. And also does not provoke an attack of opportunity, importantly. That's right. But I could also use two actions to produce flame and just keep burning these guys. You could do that. Which is, <laughs> you know, pretty tempting. That's true. I know you do tend to like that sort of thing, Aklep. Uh, yeah, we like burning Amy. Our favorite little fire mug. <laughs> um, and I, I don't really want to get Grifka hurt. Sure. Like, he, he can smack things. But he has to, like, walk up to them to smack them. Right. And I don't want him to do that. Okay. After watching what happened to Hrungara, that seems fair. Yeah, I'm very concerned. Uh Uh-huh. So I I believe we're gonna, um, we're gonna produce flame. Okay. Oh, and I'm gonna hit the one, um, not the one that just moved, but the one that hit me. The one that's directly in front of you. Yeah, the one that's in my range. Now, that one has not gone again yet, which means it doesn't have another attack of opportunity yet. Which is good, because I think that probably casting that spell has the manipulate action. It sure does. If you had cast that spell when that thing hadn't used up its attack of opportunity, it would have gotten to attack you. But it doesn't have an attack of opportunity anymore. It used it last round. She's a pro. She knew that. (laughs) All right. So I can, I'm going to hit attack on the thing that I brought up. Go for it. Oh, uh, doesn't seem like a good roll. Hero point, if you want to. You could use a hero point. Yeah, let's do that. That was a 12. Yeah, 12 seems bad, but I have a plus 10 uh, to uh, also, so it was a 2. It was a 2 roll. That's it's not great. All right, how do I use a hero point? I just, just gave myself a bunch of them. Just do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you start with 3 every I game. I have 15 what? hero points. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself 3 instead of using one. No. Bad. It's a 26 now to there roll. We That's go. my hero point. Yeah, cool. That is a hit. Excellent. I will roll the damage now. Please do. Solid damage. Um, on my 3d4 damage, I got six fire damage. All right, six fire damage as Aklep summons a ball of flame in his hands and throws it at this creature, and the creature recoils, suffering much more damage than just six points of damage. And that's the end of your turn. Yay, Aklep. It was a good round. Yeah. So next is that creature that you just attacked. Oh, he loves me. <laughs> and it takes a step forward out of the flames. Weird. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> oh, but he began his turn in the flames, so he's on flame, right? Or on fire. Is it you begin your turn, or is it in, you end your turn? Let's read the spell description. I think, I think it might be end your turn. Yeah. A creature what that a moves jerk. in the ground through the fire, blah, 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 that ends its turn in the area. So it didn't end its turn in the area. All right, so it steps forward out of the fire, looking nervously behind it. It is obviously not happy about this growing area of fire that has engulfed the room. It's going to take an attack on Aklep, a 14. That does not pierce his AC. No, the giant tree creature is flailing around nervously, looking panicked now, makes a wild swing at Aklep, and misses. With its second attack, it rolls a 23. Uh, yeah, I don't have my shield raised now, so that does hit. Yeah, that does hit. And you're going to take all the damage, I'm afraid. Roll low, roll low. All right. 14 points of damage. 10 of that is bludgeoning, 4 of that is spirit damage. Well, that's pretty nice. As the creature slams its sword into poor Aklep. And then with its last action, the creature raises a shield. What a wimp. Corgo. It's your turn. This giant tree creature has stepped right up to you. Okay, Hrungar going down has made Corgo angry. Uh-oh. W- would we like Corgo when he's angry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't do it. I deleted my button. 
<laughs> Here we go. I got it now. There we go. Okay. Now Corgo's mad. Now he goes into Saber 2 Tiger mode. And he's gonna he's gonna bite it and swipe at a tree because that's <laughs> what a sane person do. I'm not sure that anybody would get mad. Well, no, I, won't, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure somebody somewhere got, got mad enough to try to bite a tree. Most certainly. Arr, with a 14, that'll miss. And second attack. Arrow point. Uh, mm, uh, uh, oh, hero point. Really? I'll I, it's save. too late for the first one. You've already rolled uh, yeah, your second I'll attack. S- I'll s- I'll s- well, Cargo might go down this next turn. Yeah, let's use the hero point. Okay. Right? Right? Sure. Right. Roll the nine on the next one, Yikes. so that's no nope. good. All right, so Cargo's hero point is gone, and that was three actions to do all that stuff. Okay. So Corgo starts biting the tree, and it doesn't seem to do anything. If that second roll was your hero point roll, wouldn't that be plus five because it is um, the attack multiple attack penalties on there? Does twenty one hit? It's got the plus five on there. It's it's, uh, it's got it's got the um, minus five for the multiple attack penalty. Yeah. So the first attack first attack was plus ten. Second attack, he okay, rolled with the hero point. You're not letting him the hero points on the second roll. Not, not for, for the sure. first one. Okay. Uh, he rolled the second attack just before you said hero point. Okay. Right? Uh, it's just fine. It is fine. It's going to be fine. All right. So your hunter friend takes another shot with his bow. Pew! Oh, man. He's good. 26. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Another hit. He's not able to pierce the tree's thick bark. Uh, so the arrow just sort of bounces off of the tree. Dude. Dude, I feel ya on the bow damage. Feel ya. Yep. He's going to try shooting again. Probably not going to hit. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, the creature raised its shield, so no, that doesn't hit. And with his third action, he's actually going to just step back a little bit. And that brings us to, let's see, Hrungara. So Hrungara is wounded, no, sorry, is dying one. Right. You need to make a flat check, DC 11, right? I think so. That makes sense to me. Actually, it should be a DC-12 flat check because Rangara was knocked unconscious by a critical hit, knocking him down to dying two. But, as you'll see shortly, that won't make much of a difference one way or the other. Go! Five. Didn't make it. Yeah, that didn't work, which takes Rangara to dying two. Let's see. That means it is the weird trees in the room. Oh, dear. I think I'm going to do a couple different things. What does it look like when you attack uh, an unconscious creature in Pathfinder 2E? Anyone know that? Well, I think you damage it, and then you send it further down the dying track. All right. Do you have to roll to hit? Uh, yeah, your dying value increases by one. Minus six to AC. First, these crazy weird trees, this tree hazard, they're going to try to hit Hrungara. This is probably going to kill Hrungara. Are you ready? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it can't. It's a very uncool thing to do. All right, so here we go. All right, a 33 is what I rolled. 19 plus 14. And Hrungara's AC is down by six. Right, and that's a that's a critical two. So that'll, that would send Hrungara all the way to... Dying four. Dying four. Which is dead, right? I think so. Let's double check that. And if it ever reaches dying four, you die. Yes. All right. Unless you so, have age a feat to yeah. increase it to five. Unfortunately, these crazy trees have just beaten Hrungara into the ground, and you're pretty sure Hrungara has expired. Unfortunately, they are not done yet. Uh, they are going to also, uh, since you're still there, they're going to try to take one attack on Corgo and one attack on Aklep. Are we in the room? Yeah, I mean, you're sort of... Are you in the room? I mean, you're right next to one of those trees. I guess not. I guess you're not formally in the room. So I guess they probably can't. They weren't doing it before. Yeah, I mean, only it was Rungara entering the room. Right. Yeah, so I, yeah, you're real close to being in the room, but I guess you're not officially in the room, so I guess they're not going to. We can sense the danger. Zancath, that makes it your turn. The trees can't hit anyone else, but they have made the room difficult terrain again. I'm going to see Rungara pass and be very sad and angry and throw the next tallow bomb to that square. 
uh, which is just behind the uh, trees, uh, but should not hit Sweet Rungara's body. Now, I think you actually have to try to hit them with it if you want to do anything other than splash damage. You could just do splash damage you're, if you're okay with that. Just do it. Rungara would want you to do it. I'm... No, let me, let me... Or you could hit the one in the back. You could do that. Hit that one uh, in the back right there. That's too far. That's too far. It's oh, a 20-foot it. 20 range. Okay. I'm just going to go for splash damage. Okay. I'm not going to hit him, Rara. All right. Well, unless you critically miss, this will be a success then. 26. That's a success. So yep. they're both going to take splash damage. Yep. All right. So once again, a Talibomb goes off and the two creatures recoil from it. One of them's already taking persistent damage. The other one does not, uh, because it's not a direct hit. It doesn't have to worry about persistent damage. But they both take a decent amount of damage from that. The one that is closest to Aklep and Korgo, the one that's standing near the entrance to this room, is in really rough shape now. It looks like it could go down any moment. What else do you want to do? I was going to do something else, but if it's that close to going down, I'm going to pull out my last Talibom and uh, do the same thing again. Okay. Sure you don't want to try to hit the creature directly? I don't want to... Rungara. Feels disrespectful. Uh, make another attack roll, unless it's a critical miss. 15. That's not a critical miss. You're fine. So you do another cool. pile of damage to them. It's not down yet, is it? It's not down. Can you guys see its little health bar thing at the bottom? It, we just no. get... You can see it's near death. Near death. It's yeah. red. The other one's orange. It's been near death for a bit. Yeah, the little health bar that I get to see has barely anything left. It's, like a little, <laughs> it's just a teeny, teeny little bit down there left at the bottom. Okay. I made my decision. Here we are. Now, the creature that is closest to, well, the one, the one that is standing partly in the flames steps all over poor Herngara's corpse in order to get out of the fire. So that's one action. It steps up closer to Corgo, and then it attacks Corgo. Second action, we're going to do a strike. That's a 27. That's a hit. That's 17 points of damage to Corgo. 14 bludgeoning, 3 spirit damage. And then with this third action, it's going to try to put out this fire. So I'm going to get a free flat check. Well, not a free flat check. It cost me an action. An 18. All right, it puts out the fire. So it's not the end of the round yet, so it doesn't take the resistant fire damage. Aklep, what do you want to do? Um, I want to sustain my wildfire. Okay, so it gets bigger yet again. And now both creatures are in it. And they look really panicked now. Yeah, they're going to have a hard time getting out of it. Can you just extend this wildfire for eternity? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it says. I think it only lasts a minute. Right. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> like, there's a limit. But yeah, for a while. But it could get real big. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's wildfire. <laughs> yeah. All right, so what else you want to do? That's one action. That was a pretty cool action. That was a cool action. It was. Make, make a note. Yeah. Cool action. Yep. Let me see. Now be careful casting spells now. Yeah, you might want to take a five foot. S- well, a five foot step wouldn't put you out of range because they have reach. Yeah, five foot step useless. Keep that shield up. You can always bite. So you it. don't want me to do damage. You just want me to run away. I don't know. I don't know what you should do. Me either, man. There's. You, you... Yeah, I mean, you've got to. You, you're taking a risk here. The creature has an attack of opportunity. If you try to cast a spell, you know it's going to use that attack of opportunity on you. You could take two steps back. If you take two steps back, you're also going to get an attack of opportunity for moving out of its uh, area. Well, you could take, you've got two actions left. One step and then another step. Neither of them triggers attacks of opportunity. That's true. You could do that. So I can simply walk away as my action. That's true. <laughs> yes. yes. I mean, you're doing enough by making the fire big. So Corgo and Aklep are blocking the doorway so the trees can't escape to the fire room. It only takes one of us to block the doorway, but we have to, that person has to be conscious. Yeah, aren't aren't you more injured than I am, though? Yes. Yeah, but you know, whatever. You're you you're the one keeping the fire going. That's a good point. Okay, I will. Um... I don't know. Does this game have the equivalent of concentration checks, like Dungeons and Dragons? It does have edition? concentration, but I don't think it's the same as Five E. Uh, hold on just a moment if you want me to read about that. I was asking a handy-dandy AI, and it's getting the rules so bad, I can't yeah. rely on it any longer. <laughs> like, I, I asked it about the death and dying rules, and it told me a DC-10 will saving throw. And I was like, oh, that's that's nice. Use the right terminology. Will save, at least. Yes, it's in the right, yeah. It's, yeah. it's clearly read the book, but it was drinking when it did it. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Okay, I think I'm going to take a step back and then okay. raise my shield. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's Aklep's turn. Aklep takes a step away from the opening here and raises a shield, which removes him from the range of one of the creatures and leaves him within range of the other. But the shield will help provide some defense. Now, this horribly injured, burning, now about to start burning, tree creature can't get past Corgo. It is now stuck with the flames behind it and Corgo in front of it. It's going to try to take down Corgo so it can move forward out of the flames. It really doesn't have any other choice. That's a 21 to hit. That hits. Oh, really? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. The damage. 14 points of damage. Okay. Corgo's still up. Corgo's not feeling great, but he's so mad you can't even tell. You can't even tell he's hurt. And the creature looks desperate. You're still not out of its way. So it's going to attack again. A 14 to hit. That misses, thankfully. Ooh. All right. And again, it is extremely desperate. I'm going for the natural 20 now. A yeah. three. No. And that means the creature ends its turn in the fire and takes any amount of fire damage and dies. Yeah. That's what we like to see. The creature just suddenly goes up in flames, makes a horrific screaming sound, and then just crumbles to the ground. And that was the end of its turn. Corgo, this creature is dead. What do you want to do? Corgo's going to bite the other one because it's stepping all over Rungar like a jerk. Ah, natural 20. Yay! Oh. You're really biting that bark. <laughs> Damage? I want to make sure this is crits. Cat animal instinct. What is it? Just times two? Well, just times two. Oh, after yep. I roll it, it figures it out. Okay. That's 14 damage. All right. 14 points of damage. And what kind of damage? This is bludgeoning. Piercing. It says it's piercing. Oh, it's teeth. Yeah. All right. 14 points of damage. Not all of that goes through. The creature seems somewhat resistant to your bites, but you still did a decent amount of damage. What else do you want to do? I feel like teeth can do bludgeoning, too. It's going to keep going. 22 to hit. Oh, that's a hit. 11 damage. Slashing. Wow, okay. Corgo, describe how you kill this tree. Oh, cool. So, Corgo's mad. One tree falls over on fire. He's bite the, the other tree swipes at him. He bites it in the arm, and then he, he rips the whole arm off. And that's cool. And then the tree, you know, falls down, and the flames expand, continue expanding, and both trees are, f- like, flipping on the ground on fire. The fire continues to spread. What do you want to do? I mean, is, is Aklep going to continue sustaining the spell? If so, it's going to engulf Rungara's body here in a moment. A Corgo, pull out Hung- Rungara. I don't know. He can't even reach in there. I would say you can reach in there and grab the body if you want to. It gets four, it gets four attacks. It's ridiculous. If you won't do it, I'll do it. Just I'll, move. I'll do it. Yeah, Aklep. So I want to not, like, consume the whole cave with it. But uh, I do want to burn this unnatural forest. Uh-huh. Okay. That's what I figured you're doing. Yeah. So you basically set everything in this room on fire, all these trees. And there's a weird, quiet, screaming, hissing sound as these trees all go up in flames. And it doesn't take long with this incredibly rapidly spreading fire for the room to go quiet and smoke billows out of the room and into the rest of the cave system. Grifka kind of like comes lumbering up next to Aklep and uh, strengthens his fire with his little elemental companion thing. And they both just watch flames. Uh Uh-huh. So Aklep and the fire elemental stare into the room that's on fire. Meanwhile, Corgo, your animal companion is very dead, I'm sorry to say. Rungar was so brave and strong and growing so fast fought bravely. Right, right guys? Yes, yes, absolutely. He was, he was there to protect you and he would have done anything for you, Corgo. Packlep nods. The hunter puts away his bow and walks up and says, I'm, I'm so sorry, my friend. This creature of yours, it is beautiful and I, I weep with you. Mm, I think you owe your life to me now. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> nope, Gorgo, we're not getting into that. Oh, okay. I 
Suppose if, if, you are if right. If so, we would... Nope, you don't. Your life is your own. If you want to be thankful, that's great. Uh, if Forgo and I would owe each other our lives multiple times over, it's not necessary. I don't. I mean, Hungar died for him. It makes sense to me, but all right, fine. If you say that that's not the way that works. You know, I think um, I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I think sky burials are weird. We've been doing it for so long. I think the right thing to do is to is to burn the burn the ones we love. It's it's what I think Sister Cinder would agree. We'll do that then. We'll, we'll... What do you think, Aklep? Are you Sister Cinder follower? I feel like you should be. Aklep is busy staring into the flames. Well, I need. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> 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 Creepy. Okay, Corgo. We'll, Corgo. We'll we'll do a ceremonial uh, burning burial, the first one of its kind. L- Later, we don't want creepy fire burning Eclep to do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> let Eclep have, have this moment. Maybe not in creepy haunted forest either. So yeah, either yeah. 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 Let's let's uh, let's go whenever Eclep's done. <laughs> Eclep continues staring. While Eclep is staring, uh, can I do a uh, treat wounds on Corgo? Certainly. Okay. I'm fine. That's a medicine roll. Mm-hmm. You're not fine. You're bleeding all over the place. Totally fine right now. I won't do it if you don't want me to. Do you not want me to? I think you have to because this game does so much damage. <laughs> I agree. That's why I was trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, you have to do it because you can't even role play a pool. Oh, that didn't work, I think. That's only a 14. That didn't work, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, did you even wash your hands Stop first? Stop moving around, Corgo. <laughs> I can't get a hold of anything. I'm so sad at your hurt. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> the hunter says, uh, excuse me. Uh, my name is Udiak. Who are you? Uh, I'm Zankath. Uh, this is Corgo, and that's Aklep. Hello. Uh, we are members of the uh, Broken Tusk following. I have never heard of you. We don't generally come in this area. Not recently, at least. I am of the Sutaki. I, I fear I know... You have heard of us? I, I have not. I don't know anything of the Sutaki. I have other friends here in the cave, but I was with Pintak. And he looks back into the room, and at the back of the room, you see that corpse of his friend now just totally up in flames. I was with my friend. I was going to recover the body, but... sorry. I suppose there's no point now. No, it is I that am sorry. uh, My foolishness has... Our foolishness has cost you your friend. That is uh, unfortunate. We can help you. Do you need anything? My friends are in a room nearby. Uh, I escorted some of... We, we escorted some of our group to a, a place to the north. and We were finding a clear path out of here, but we came upon the room. Is there something we can help you with? Uh, that's why we were here. We're looking for a way for our following to make its way through these caves. Do you have much knowledge of the area beyond these caves? Oh, yes. Yes. This is our valley. We live here. Well, it used to be our valley. We live here. Uh, Do you have any suggestions of avoiding the dragon? We have a rather large following in... Oh, that is difficult. No, you will not... You will not be able to keep a large following secret from the dragon unless you hide in the caves. These caves? There's not caves that... Not that I know of, no. That's what I assumed. No, it is difficult to avoid the dragon. We have had to be very careful to come here from all the way to the east. What What are you doing here in the cave yourselves? You're just looking for a way through? And making sure there's nothing in here that could uh, harm our people. Oh, there are many things that are dangerous in these caves. Uh, we've we've uh, seen a few of them at this point. There was a terrifying creature which wore the skin of animals. Uh, we took care of that one. Oh, that is a demon. It seemed very demonic, honestly, yes. Some of my people are to the south, and some are to the north where we escorted them. Uh, I I think Aokoe would want to speak to you. I, I believe we've heard of Aokoe. 
Uh, but I don't uh, believe that we've spoken with them yet. No, you haven't yet. You you spoke to some hunters in a room to the south, and they said that they were looking, or they they were they said that they were hoping that Aokoe, Tadano, and Dinny would rejoin them soon. They had yeah. gone with an escort and had not come back yet. Aklep grunts and says, Groton. Yes, yes, Groton. He is of our group. Aklep nods. We spoke to him. Yes. He is very friendly. Agreed. We got there eventually with him. Do you know where Aokoe is, then? To the north? I am not allowed to know the details. There is a place to the north, a sacred place, where Aokoe, Tadano, and Dini have gone. It is not for me. This sacred place, would it be uh, wrong for us to go there to seek out this Aokoe? Oh, no. You you are not Sutaki. You may go. Excellent. Uh, th- thank you. Uh, we appreciate the information and plan to go that way uh, I- anyway to check the rest of these caves. And we said that we would keep an eye out for uh, Aokoe and the others. Very good. I will rejoin the hunters to the south and tell them of what you have done. And maybe you can, if you find Aokoe, make sure that they are safe and return to us. We'll do our best. If we do not hear from you, we will come looking. Uh, That is greatly appreciated. Thank you. All right. Well, he heads back down the passageway, leaps over the traps that were set in there in the area, and rejoins his friends. So now the question is, with your... Or dead uh, cat. What do you want to do now? And Corgo injured and Aklep injured? Uh, what time of day are we looking at? Like, how long have we been out here? I think it's probably approaching uh, midday, early afternoon by this point. Zankath is going to suggest we go ahead and make our way back uh, to the following so we can honor Hurungara and everybody can get some rest. Yeah, good idea. I'm about to do something I'm going to regret. Stupid Odiac, stupid friends. Literally, literally in the next room, like ten feet away. They didn't even help him. We had to do it. Now Hogar is dead. Stupid. I don't. the The fact that their friends were so close and yet is frustrating. But uh, whatever. At least we saved someone today. That's something. Exactly. We we did a good thing. Uh, they were about 120 feet as the cro- uh, like going around the corner, and then yeah, they were they were pretty far away. Destroyed, twisted, corrupt grove. They were scared, is what they were. They couldn't even look a little bit. Set up traps in a little room. And they hid in there. Okay, so you want to head back to the following then? Yes. So you make the trip back through the caves, back to the uh, northeast. Back down the passage. Which way are you going as you move through this passage here? you There are some areas here where you haven't quite fully explored. Yeah, we haven't explored. Yeah, we're going ways we've gone. <laughs> we haven't explored much to the north. We can go back this way, which is the way we came out, because there might be... It kind of looks like we did explore this passageway. Well, you didn't walk down it and search it, but you did. You can see it. You can see that area. I, um, I would say walk down that way. Yeah. Why don't Why don't you let me go first, and I'll I will keep an eye out for anything dangerous since you're both injured. Yeah. Good idea. I will go in front to look for traps, see if there's anything okay. that, that might attack. Zankath, you are searching. I think. Yeah, you are searching. So as you're moving forward, you're making a perception check. What is everyone else doing? I think we're just waiting. Are you just waiting and Zankoth's going forward by herself? Yeah. yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm sneakier anyway. Zanks is cool. So, Zankath, you sneak forward. Um, you're not actually sneaking. You're just... No, because uh, 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 I, I can't. I would rather be looking for stuff than sneaking. So if I'd have the option, I will be looking for stuff rather than sneaking. But if I could do both, I would love to do both. So, Zankath, you're... Moving forward, moving through this tunnel that you haven't explored before. It's on the way back, but you just haven't moved down this specific passage before. You sort of took a roundabout way. So this passage continues wide and easily navigated. It's from your direction that you're going now. It's going north, and then it bends up to the northeast. And then there's that 
narrow, smaller tunnel that splits off from the main t- passage that you've been through before, where you found a little secret thing in the wall, if I remember correctly. Yeah. You are walking down this passageway. Oh, how are you seeing? I have low light vision. Is there enough light in here for me to... There's a little bit of light coming in from outside. You also have your magical torch. I, I would rather not have it out if I can see somewhat. It's going to get real dark around the corner up ahead, and you're not going to be able to see anymore. But you can see a little bit here. I will avoid torch as long as possible. And okay. once it gets too dark for me to see, I'll pull out the torch. So you continue down the passage. You're welcome to move yourself if you like. I'll stop it if you need to. And stop. <laughs> All right, so right at that spot when you're walking by that area, you suddenly get a strange, an unnatural sense of cold. And you realize that something is wrong here. Something in this area. And as you realize that, you also notice that the walls are covered in some kind of weird mold. It's this brownish mold spreading across the walls. And as you walk by, you feel like it's this coldness from this mold is reaching out toward you. And you realize that this is going to hurt. And we'll find out how much it hurts next time. (laughs) Oh, no. Okay. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The House of Bob, or by chatting with us on Discord. And most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash The House of Bob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get one shots, commentary, and other cool stuff. Art for this campaign is by Sean Makes, and art for social media, audio production, and music are by Mike. Thanks again for listening, and roll on. Unfortunately, Herangara has strode into the room, uh, which means that I have to have these, I have to get these stupid uh, room hazard involved. So, okay, give me about 20 minutes to read this, okay? Okay. Uh, okay. I gotta okay. actually. I gotta take something out of the oven, so I'll be right back. T- okay. Tell me what you've done to my poor animal companion. Okay. Well, yeah. By the time you get back, well, I might be done. I might not. Who knows? Uh, okay. So I gotta read this. Just read it aloud to us. Yeah. Okay. There's some actions. We gotta go get some lotion. Okay. You go ahead and do that while I while I read. Yeah. Yeah. And you would find that their skin is becoming. Horribly dry, even though it's like not winter anymore. No, I I no. never, I literally never have that problem. Oh my I do goodness. during the winter, but not right now. I never do. I am the oiliest person you know. All right. Well, I guess I'm ready. I'm sorry. Next time we'll never come into the room yeah. ever again. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's this stupid encounter with two monsters and a programmed hazard all at the same time. It's good to know that there's only two of them. Well, you, I mean, you can see them. Oh, you know, who knows how many other live trees. Okay, there could be other stuff lurking around, sure. (laughs) Ha ha ha, spoiler. We're members of the um, uh, Burning Mammoth following. No, you're not. Nope, every time. (laughs) (laughs) No, you're not. (laughs) Every single time. Broken Tusk, it's... Right there yeah, in the title. It's, called... it's right yep. there in the title. Take it, again. Take it again from the top. <laughs> well, we say Burning Mammoth a lot more than we say Broken right? Tusk. So. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put that in bold somewhere in my notes. Uh, okay, now I have to read stuff. Give me a moment. <laughs> Not the box text, no! Yeah. Get out of there. I'm, I'm at full health, so I don't think it's going to hurt me enough to kill me immediately at least, so... How many hit points do you have? 46. Oh, that's how much it does. Oh, no, what are the chances? Look at that coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that, that combat was fun. You like that combat? Burning that grove, excellent. That Love was cool. That, that was cool. Uh, it was both a very scary combat, but also, like, good. Like, it was good in a scare- scary in a good way. You know what I mean? I think we had a lot of lucky rolls, too. Like, we, uh, you know, we were able to save that guy, like, really quickly. We were placed well, so we didn't get a bunch of, like, attacks from the terrain, and we had fire. <laughs> you know what their strategy was supposed to be? The, like, lure well, you in, because they had yeah, reach. you into the room, and then once you're in the room, they step behind to block the exit. Yeah. And then you suffer the four, uh, three attacks per round from the hazard, plus the attacks Them. from those big trees. That, that is would've... a TPK room. Yeah, that's a TPK oh, yeah. room right there. We had a, a wonderful strat for it.
Yes. I mean, that wildfire spell was clutch. Yeah, yeah that, was, that nice. was big. Remind me next time to give you a hero point for that. That was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Why, thank you. Just keep all the three of them that you yeah, gave yourself. Yeah, just keep the three. It's right. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself. 